Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everybody I am so excited to welcome you guys to the new Rosie's Corner studio and I want to say a huge 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 thank you to the artist who made this beautiful beautiful sign for me and that artist is me okay it took me four hours to do this thing just this one mind you I had this other one that I was doing right then I realized I had the wrong size canvases, okay? It was too small. So after two hours of working on that one, I had to go and buy these two canvases so I could do this, and this took me four hours, okay? So it was a total of six hours just on the sign, okay? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I spent all day yesterday uh, making this little, uh, well, not making, but, you know, decorating uh, this little studio, and I am so happy with it. I am, like, obsessed. This is my, like, little happy place. Um, but anyways, let's get to the video, guys. So today's topic is, did Jesus die on the cross for our sins, okay? And to start off, we are going to go to the Quran. And we are going to go to chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 155 to 159, okay? And it says, And so, for breaking their pledge, for rejecting God's revelations, for unjustly killing their prophets, for saying, Our minds are closed, no, God has sealed them in their disbelief, so they believe only a little. And because they disbelieved and uttered a terrible slander against Mary, and said, We have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God. But they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, though it was made to appear like that to them. Those that disagreed about him are full of doubt, with no knowledge to follow. They certainly did not kill him. No, God raised them up to himself. God has the power to decide. There is not one of the people of the book who will not believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be a witness against them. Ooh. So according to the Quran, Jesus did not die on the cross. Jesus was not crucified. It was only made to appear so. He was rather raised to Allah, to God, right? But now let's take a look at what the Bible says about Jesus' crucifixion. And I want to make it very clear, I personally do not believe that the Bible is the word of God. but. But I know that a lot of you believe that it is, which is why I use it in my videos. I just wanted to clear that up for y'all, okay? But anyways, let's get into it. So there's a couple of places, actually a lot of places in the Bible where it states that, you know, Jesus died for our sins. Um... But the story of the crucifixion is only really mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? So we're going to go into it. I'm not going to be, like, reading from the Bible. I have, I have some notes that, that I've taken. Um, but I will let you know where I found it so you guys are more than welcome to grab your Bible and follow along, okay? So we're going to start off with Matthew and the story of the crucifixion in Matthew find it in chapter 27 okay so according to Matthew 27 it was the third hour where Jesus cried out to God my God my God why have you forsaken me now this brings me a, a couple of questions in mind you know if, if you think that Jesus is God is he like crying out to himself like now, another thing is, you know, if Jesus is God, and, and this was the plan all along, right? 
right to, to crucify, like get crucified and die for our sins and all that. If that was the plan, did Jesus like forget the plan? Because why, first of all, he, he prayed, you know, take, take this cup from me and stuff. Um, and apparently God didn't listen. Well, according to the Bible, God didn't listen to him when he did that, right? When he prayed that. But then here, it's like he forgot that that was also, you know, the plan. I, I don't know if he just forgot that when he was born, did he forget everything? I, I, I don't. I, I don't understand really how, how all of this fits. And the other question is, do you guys really think that God would allow all this to happen? Like, for example, for us in the Quran, right, Jesus was one of the closest prophets to Allah, to God, right? So in my mind, if you're like the closest one to God, I feel like, you know, if you pray to God and you're the closest, he's going to listen to you. You know, like, according to the Bible, did he, did God just, like, ignore Jesus' prayers? Because that's, that's two now, you know? Just, just something to think about. So then, also, in Matthew, it doesn't say that he died. It says he gave up his spirit. Okay. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, uh, one of the reasons why Jesus is God is because after he died, he resurrected himself. Well, according to the Bible, when he died, a bunch of tombs were open and people came back to life. So are they all God as well? I'm, I'm just curious, you know, on, on what's the, on how y'all see that. Now we move on to Mark, right? So Mark is also similar to Matthew um, in the sense that it was also, you know, in the third hour and all this. Um, but instead of saying he gave up his spirit, it says Jesus breathed his last. But either way, it, it was very close to, to Matthew, you know, to, to what Matthew says. So now we move on to Luke. And Luke, we can find the story of the crucifixion in Luke 23. But something that the caught my eye really quick was the fact that in Luke it was the sixth hour instead of the third hour which is what Matthew and Mark stated right so which one's right or do you think that maybe the reason why it's wrong is because it didn't happen I'm just I'm just you know throwing out questions here also in Luke when he cries out to God, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now that is very, very different from my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is what, you know, Matthew and Mark said. Again, which one was it, you know? It, those, are, those are two different things. But now let's look to John, and we're going to look at John 19, and let me tell you, this is like on a whole nother level. Um, so on verse 30, it said, uh, when Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Wait, hold up. What? So somehow he got some vinegar, okay, and then he gave up the ghost. The ghost. Not his ghost, the ghost. Hmm. And did he, wait, did he like not cry out to God in this one? That was just like completely taken out of there. Interesting. So I'm not even going to go into the details about the resurrection because that's just uh, another whole can of worms that y'all are not ready to open. Um, but I do want to touch up on something that I thought was very important. And this is found in Matthew 16. So Matthew 16 starts with the Pharisees and the Sadducees asking Jesus for a sign from heaven, mind you, before the crucifixion, right? And then in verse 4, it says, 
A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Let's think about the story of Jonah for a second. And, and, and if you don't know the story of Jonah, you can find it, well, you know, in the book of Jonah. Um, but Jonah 1.15, let, let, let's really think this through, right? When Jonah, in, in Jonah 1.15, when he was thrown into the sea, was he dead or alive? He, he was alive, right? Yeah. Um, when the huge fish swallowed Jonah in Jonah 1.17, was he dead or alive? Yeah, yeah, he was alive, right? right? And now Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of this huge fish, right? Yeah, y'all know, y'all know. Now, in Jonah 2.10, when the huge fish throws him up, is he dead or alive?